So this is Hatter and I'm back and you may think that this has only been two weeks, but really since the last recording, it's been two months. All of that stuff that you saw up until episode four was recorded basically in a two week interval and it took me months to edit it and put it together. So we're going to try changing our tactics. Um, I'm going to try this record little updates rather than doing huge long recordings and voiceover sessions. Anyway, we'll see how that works out. We'll see if we stick with it. What I'll show you here is we got our villagers together. We've got fortune. We've got looting. We've got mending. We've got our hoe, shovel, and pick. We've got pants and hats. We've got boots and, and armor. We've even got axes and swords. Unbreaking. Protection. And down here, silk touch. That's basically everything I really need, and probably more than I actually need out of uh, equipment villagers. And we've got our iron farm going with an actual storage system down here. It's not a good storage system, but at least collects the items so we don't have to stand there and die. And then we've gotten uh, dark oak, acacia, and normal oak for saplings, and we grow those occasionally. We've done a little bit of an update to our pumpkin and melon farm, which I did off camera. And we've got some, still some carrots and wheat. I think we're gonna tear this out and we're going to move over and start farming sheep because I have an idea of a thing I want to build. It's gonna take a lot of time. Most of it's going to be time gathering wool. Some of it will be time gathering wood, but all in all, I think it'll be cool. And so let's start out on building a sheep farm. Now that I've got the sheep penned up over there, we needed a cobblestone generator because if you didn't know, the sheep farm or the wool farm requires uh, dispensers and dispensers require cobblestone. And I was thinking running that, sick of running that small cobblestone generator all by hand. So this is just an eight tick clock. And this is a uh, pulse circuit, so it takes each time that the uh, signal goes high, it gives you a single pulse. So that shortens it up so that the pistons, which are waterlogged back there, fire very quickly and then they retract to allow the water to reform and the lava to make a new cobblestone generator. Subsidians to make sure it doesn't just push off into infinity there and then I put extra hoppers in because I built this wrong like seven times before I built it right Anyway, this is working. I get plenty of cobblestone from here um, As you can see get a couple of stacks already. Oh And in case you're wondering I've been getting all my redstone from this single cleric which is taking forever and we really don't have that much, so at some point in the future we're going to have to build a large cleric farm, a large glass farm, all of those sort of things because I really need to get some of these materials in larger quantities than I got them right now. For this build I'm going to need some glass, so we're going to unlock some uh, villagers, but that means I need to get dispensers made so I can make you know bone meal farms and whatever, and we're going to use up the bows that we had from before because why not they are uh, free and I don't plan on using these bows for anything so we're gonna just start crafting and see where we get to and we'll put together a bone meal farm for paper and then maybe put together uh, a few other things before we get our sheep farm together Okay, we're gonna build the cheapest, simplest water ba or bone meal based sugarcane farm that I know of. So what we're gonna need is two pistons, two dispensers, two redstone torches. Let's make up another one of those. Uh, and then we're gonna need two stairs and two sugarcane. But we got that there, so we'll put it on our hot bar. And we're gonna dig down three. All right, three blocks wide, and then we're going to make sure that we have three tall. We're going to do a stair like that, a stair like that, a redstone torch like that, bucket of water there, 
bucket of water there to waterlog. And then oh, we also need a lever, which I don't have one on me. We're going to put the lever down here. Dispenser, dispenser, piston, piston, and then any block of choice. So it could be that dirt block that we did earlier. I like to use a crafting table. So we're going to do crafting table here. Place it down like that. And then your last redstone torch on the top of the crafting table. Plant our sugar cane here and here. And then we are going to put bone meal in our dispensers. One, two, three. And then bone meal. One, two, three. And then to run this, all you do is hold your mouse here or you can click faster and it'll it'll work a little bit faster but that is the simplest and easiest bone meal base sugar cane farm that I'm aware of and it works just fine so I don't build the other ones that are more complicated it does take a little bit of you know clicky clicky to make it run but whatever it works so we are here in the nether looking for nether gold it's going to be a little bit of an adventure, but we really do need um, gold. And we're going to grab this. And I got silk, so this is going to um, actually give us another block. But we're looking for another gold because we need some powered rails. And the only way to get gold in a reliable fashion is nether work. So let's go to the nether, see if we can find some gold. If we can find some gold, like, oh, that's quartz. If we can find some gold, that will be super, super helpful. We're also going to grab some magma blocks. Those are um, useful for bubble columns and other things like that, so never kind of uh, short on uh, some of these utility blocks, I guess. Never want to be short on them. And our first bits of gold. They were in our tunnel, so... And an ancient debris. Nice. I have actually, in Minecraft, never made... Uh, the... Netherite anything. I've traded and gotten a netherite hoe. But I've never actually made a netherite tool. So, that might make me crazy, which... I think no surprise there, but I don't, I don't know. I've never really seen the need for it. Um, so we'll, we'll probably do that in the series because we're collecting all the items. We got to do it, but this will be the first time that I've ever made netherite stuff. Anyway, tell me what you think about that in the comments because I'm sure everybody's like, what? You're crazy? And we're back. We got a little bit of a haul. Nothing too crazy. We got one ancient debris from that, but... Uh, it's something better than nothing, I guess. So we're going to go down here. This is kind of becoming a dump chest, unfortunately. But we're going to put our soul sand, our soul soil, and our nether resources in here for now. We got 30 pork chops. We might need to set up a hogland farm that uh, gives us raw pork chops so we can trade them away soon. Anyway, we're going to get some... Uh, we're going to get some powered rails just to get us started over here. Okay, now that we got a couple of uh, pieces of gold, we can get our 24 powered rails, and that should be enough to get us started. It'll get us a couple modules of the sheep farm together, and we're going to grab purple dye, and I think we're going to keep some white sheep, uh, and then we will grab some yellow dye, because I think we, I'm not sure, we might have enough for two modules, maybe three, but we're gonna need gold, that's our limiting resource. We'll get the couple modules up and we'll see how it goes. So I want this sheep farm to be a little bit away from that side so I have a place where I can still spawn mobs. I want it to be at least four chunks or five chunks away from the, um, from the hostile mob, mob farm because we're gonna put a lot of sheep in here. So I'm thinking we're going to put it over here where we haven't finished slime proofing yet. And we'll, we're going to kind of do a different uh, design for a, a sheep farm. This is one that I came up with well, last night um, talking with Watchful and some other people. Um, the 
sheep uh, shearing on bedrock has a little bit of a, I don't know, an exploit or a bug, whatever you want to call it, where when you shear a sheep, or when you shear using a dispenser, it doesn't actually take durability for each sheep that you shear. So you effectively can shear what like uh, 20, 30, 40 sheep with a dispenser with one click and it won't take your durability down 30, 40 times. So rather than doing a, you get out of here. Rather than doing a big, um, oops, a big uh, sheep farm where every sheep has its own module, we're going to do something a little bit different because we want to get the highest amount of grass growth possible. So what we're starting with is a platform like this and our minecarts are going to go uh, bounce back and forth on that. We're not going to actually put these as all powered rails. We don't have enough gold to do that, but just giving kind of illustrating a point here. And then above we're going to put so grass like that in this trough shape and we're going to fit as many sheep as we can in this trough going left and right and the idea is they're going to get a lot of time to um, eat and the grass is going to get a lot of time to spread and then we're going to use a daylight sensor as a trigger for the sheep farm to shear the sheep. Let me get some of this built up and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this is what the sheep farm's going to look like, except for I gotta put the redstone in. We've gotta breed up all the sheep, and that's why we have a set of glass panes, which are almost invisible in this texture pack. Um, so we can breed through that little angled area. And it doesn't work if there's a baby sheep in the middle, so that's why there's I haven't bred them all up yet. So they eat grass in this trough, and this grass on the outside is going to spread in, and the grass below will spread up, and this grass up here will spread down. We haven't put all of the grass in yet because it's um, I got to put got to reach in to breed, but we're going to do we're going to hook up the redstone, and I I thought of a really simple redstone circuit for this, and it uses some blocks that I almost never use. So well, observers I use all the time. So ignore that uh, but we're gonna look up a daylight sensor so this is quartz and slabs we've got that on us I've never even crafted one of these in Minecraft so let's do that and slabs we've got a daylight sensor now what we're going to do for our circuit is we're gonna put a daylight sensor here and then we're going to put a piece of redstone dust. And we're going to put an observer. And the reason that we're doing this is we're watching the state change. Oh, I need to move one more out. I'll go one more grass block out. So, daylight sensor, where did you go? Daylight sensor, redstone dust. And then we're going to just run a line of redstone down this way. So what this is going to do is every single time the time of day changes from oh, like there, it just changed. It's not night, but it changed from noon to afternoon and it ticked off the uh, dispensers, which have nothing in them. So now I've got to go fill up all of these dispensers with shears and then technically the farm is running. We just got to get more sheep in there to make it faster. So we'll cut back when that happens. Hey, a bit of a project rest update here. I have two modules in and populated. You can see all the sheep in this little uh, containment pen. They grow their wool and then once a day or so, or a couple times a day, the uh, shears go off and then these mine carts below. I think we, oh, there he is, one with the wool on him. The minecarts will pick up the wool. Uh, one thing to note, it does mix colors because they share this rail. 
if you decide to build it this way, that's a problem. Also, it's not perfectly lossless. As you can see, I don't have something collecting the wool right there, but I might swap that out for hopper and fix that in the future. Uh, anyway, we're going to uh, put in the black and red colors because those are the ones I need the most wool of and maybe a yellow bay in, but I think we're going to start we're going to finish this up and then wrap up for this particular episode. So let's get on to building the last couple of modules. Oh, hey, well, there it is. We have many sheep in the uh, sheep farm. You can see we're basically fully loaded in there. Uh, we have gotten a ton of wool in the process of building this. Um, I am manually sorting into these. I did some quick estimates of how much wool I need. Um, it's a lot. Uh, I need at least five shulkers of white and at least five shulkers of red. And I probably need triple that of um, purple. So. I think I'm going to go AFK for a little while and we'll see how we can get uh, how much wool we can get and I think that's where I'm going to leave it so if you like this video you know give it a like if you do want to see more of this please subscribe and if you want some cool packs and whatever else join the discord we could talk about them or uh, jump over to my website which all of that stuff is in the description so thanks bye